I love church at St. Luke's. Thank you. What a year. This year has stopped us cold, upended everything we thought we knew, taken us to the mat, and held us there. We've had to confront the pandemic and all that's come with it. We've had to confront deeper layers of systemic racism, the depth of division in our country, and with so many extraneous distractions quieted, this year has asked us to confront ourselves. It's been a refining process, as in going through the refiner's fire that Isaiah talks about. Some things we thought were essential have proven not to be. And some things that had been pushed to the periphery have found their way back to the center. It's been a time of loss and disappointment and stress and anxiety, as well as a time for gratitude and wonder and creativity and even joy. It has called for the very best of ourselves. And you, dear St. Luke's, have answered that call in every way. So I want to start by thanking you. Who can take a pandemic in stride? Well, you have done just that. In the blink of an eye on March 15th, we started gathering for worship in a whole new way, made possible by Zoom. You embrace the new technology, and even our 92 and 93-year-olds, with a little help from younger family members, have navigated this new terrain. You kept right on sharing your glad news and singing the birthday song and sharing your moments closest to Christ and sharing your concerns and thanksgivings in prayer time. Our community has made peace with responses that aren't quite together because we could see and hear each other and we knew we weren't praying alone. And what we have created feels so much like us. Prayerful, playful, holy community. When other choirs just stopped, you were fearless, risking the exposure of singing solos and singing a cappella and handing off a hymn to a singer coming behind you. And you ventured into the wonderful land of virtual choir projects to discover your harmony in a whole new way. This year we had to make a huge technological pivot. Beyond Jim Banks' production on the virtual choir projects, Jim has also been instrumental in researching, designing, installing, and making all the equipment go. We simply could not have created this truly interactive, mutually participatory, multi-locational experience without his front-end efforts. And with the addition of singers in the Great Hall, Cecil Gerganis has given generously of his time and expertise to run the soundboard. There's a lot going on behind the scenes on Sunday morning, and these guys are the wizards behind the curtain. I am deeply grateful to the vestry's wisdom and willingness to invest in new technology and to donors who made pieces of this project possible. Having stewarded our financial resources well over the years, we could obtain the equipment we needed to worship in this new way, a new way that will no doubt go forward with us when the pandemic is done. But St. Luke's hasn't just been about shifting our worship into a whole new model. You have continued to address all aspects of our common life that make for a vital church. You have called one another and written more cards than I ever knew could be written. You have continued to feed the hungry and serve the least of these of Matthew 25 continuing to do the bread of life for Hospitality House, 
filling the gap when school closed last spring, leaving children food insecure, continuing with deliveries through the summer feeding program, and of course, getting your hands in the dirt, growing good, healthy food in the Mary Boyer Garden to give away to those who hunger for it. You donned masks and kept that six feet of distance from one another in the name of loving and caring for your neighbor. You flexed and you bent and you yielded and then you flexed some more. You have been honest about your grief at having to let so much go. And that honest grief has enabled you to embrace what's possible with creativity and grace. Children's formation continues with new adults joining via Zoom. The women's group has experimented with lots of different ways to meet the yearning for fellowship and spiritual growth in this time. These shifts haven't been easy, but you have made them nonetheless because you value each other and the community we share. You've been willing to try new things like Tuesday and Thursday evening Compline to grow our communal prayer life, weaving the spiritual fabric of our community ever stronger, ever richer. When we didn't need flowers for Easter, Catherine King, the Flower Guild Chair, said let's do a virtual flower offering for our community partners. A fabulous idea. Though I'll admit it's wonderful to see flowers back in the space. You've known where to hold fast to what feels essential, like the rituals we do when someone dies, even if how we do all those rituals had to change. You've worshiped in the sun, felt the wind, and put on a raincoat just to gather in the garden to taste the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You've been patient and understanding. You trusted your vestry, who has worked so very hard this year. And you've trusted me. Even when you haven't agreed with decisions, you have trusted your leaders and abided by the decisions nonetheless. And I can't tell you how important that has been for our community. Even in the middle of a pandemic, you have not looked away from the other calls upon our hearts and wills. When Brianna Taylor and Ahmad Arbery and George Floyd were killed in quick succession, you put on your mask and joined others in protest in Boone. You doubled down on your efforts to understand systemic racism more deeply in the Friday book study. And you explored what it meant to be an activist when your risk factors meant that you couldn't hit the streets. When it would have been easy to pull back from our commitment to college work and creation care and social justice through a new staff position, you moved forward with boldness, trusting in a future you couldn't see. When it would have been tempting to cling and hold fast to everything we've got like so many of us did with toilet paper last spring. You shared your resources generously. Because of your giving, we have been able to pay our bills and support our staff. And you have funded our community partners through the hunger basket at the highest levels ever. You have lived lives of abundance when it would have been so easy to go down the scarcity rabbit hole. And in the oddest twist ever, we have grown in this season. New people have joined us since the pandemic, are claiming Jesus and his way class is the largest we've ever had. The Friday book study has expanded and has people participating from across the country. Our coffee hour has been completely transformed. As welcoming as St. Luke's has always been, Pre-pandemic, it was still so easy to slip into our comfortable patterns at coffee hour, checking in with those most familiar to us. But in Zoom, who we talk with in coffee hour is completely random. New people have been able to enter in quickly and feel connected 
Longtime members have visited with others new and old that they've never really spoken to before. We know each other better than we did a year ago, across the board. Countless numbers of you, ministry area conveners, team leaders, and simply people who care, quietly and behind the scenes, you stepped forward to make sure that we stayed connected. You ran errands and you served. You stepped forward to make sure that our ministries continued and people didn't fall through the cracks. In extraordinarily challenging conditions, you just kept at it all year long. In every single way I can think of, St. Luke's, you have gone above and beyond. And so as your priest, I thank you. I love you and I love your tenacity. We aren't just surviving this pandemic as a church committee, community. We're much more a community than a committee, thank God. <laughs> but you have taken the invitation inherent in any crisis, to let die what must die, so that we can embrace the new life that God is inviting us to discover. We continue to discover what it means to be the body of Christ in a whole new way. And yes, when the time is right, we will be thrilled to take off our mask and pack the sanctuary once again that we will come into that time and space very much a transformed people because of this time we have spent wandering in this wilderness we call 2020. We'll be wiser, more discerning, more balanced. We'll have a greater clarity about what really matters about being church, a community with whom to pray, with whom to worship, with whom to serve, with whom to meet the challenges that life brings us, a community with whom to learn how to love, love God, love neighbor, love ourselves, love justice, love mercy, love kindness, a community with whom to learn how to love this precious, precious earth. You have always been a people committed to the way of Jesus, but never have I seen you walk the walk like you have walked it this year. Thank you for holding fast to Christ's body made flesh in this community and for welcoming all of us into your homes. Sacred space doesn't just reside at 170 Council Street. This year we've seen that sacred space radiate from homes and decks across the high country and across the country. In an odd way, the pandemic that has put distance between us has also brought us closer. We could not have weathered this year without your efforts, and we could not have accomplished all that we have without our dedicated staff team. Susan Musilli never missed a beat, including procuring cleaning supplies, making your own do-it-yourself hand sanitizer for the church, and pursuing Skyline Sky Best until they relented and brought us significantly better internet. She anchors our day-to-day -day operations, and we have laughed and pulled out our hair together. Susie Mills and Mark Longois have simply been extraordinary. Truly, other choirs and musicians just threw in the towel but not ours. Trust me, there's been a lot to grieve. The time delay on Zoom is maddening when it comes to singing. But they turned quickly from what wouldn't work to what might be possible. They have been creative beyond belief, each bringing their own unique gifts and skills and experience to this work, adding recording sessions to their job description. And as a result, we never stopped singing. We never stopped offering music that could anchor us and inspire us and soothe our souls. 
The creativity and worship planning has been full of laughter and play and joy, a great counterbalance to the challenge of it all. In Meredith Church, our choir intern has recorded herself more than one could think possible to help our choir members with their parts, not to mention soothing us with her gorgeous soprano voice. Greg Erickson has continued to anchor our hearts and call us to service from home, making calls to check in on folks, diligently praying for our community, and continuing to offer his wise, wise counsel at every step of the process, as well as giving the best dismissals ever. Anna Shine has been a wonderful addition immediately throwing herself into figuring out how to do Eucharist in the Mary Boyer Garden, helping us navigate ways to engage the work of justice with wisdom, and joining Stephanie Hankins in creating a much-needed pastoral space for our college students. Elizabeth White has continued her supportive ministry at every turn. She is a natural community organizer, joining pastoral lay leaders to help organize legions of card writers and phone callers, organizing food deliveries, helping ministries across the board brainstorm how to meet in new ways, and always doing her work with heavy doses of humor. Ellen Lewis stepped in as an interim financial secretary last year, and then when the pandemic hit, we told her she couldn't go anywhere. She's continued to handle all of our finances with grace and skill, working closely with our treasurer, Bill Firamonti. They worked hard in the early days to get as much transferred to online transactions as possible, streamlined our financial operations, and have enabled us to continue to stay on top of our finances, especially in this year when we've had to watch things so closely. Brianna Richardson and Eris Loudermilk never missed a beat in supporting our youth. Last spring, they joined with our youth in larger diocesan Zoom gatherings. And this fall, they were determined to offer our Zoomed-out youth an in-person space to meet on Sunday evenings. They have adapted in powerful and responsible ways. Lisa Hauser, our cleaner, is the most conscientious worker I've ever known. In the early days of the pandemic, when the building was only lightly used, she asked to lower her hours, returning to her full workload as more people have been in and around the space. Her diligent care of our space is inspiring. I couldn't have made it this past year without the support of the staff. And I also couldn't have made it without the support of my family. Jim, you've always been not just a partner in life, but also a partner in ministry, but never has that been truer than this year. Yes, it's been a whole lot of church talk in our house, but there's also been excitement and satisfaction and joy in seeing a good part of what we've actually attempted actually work, and to know it's helped to keep the St. Luke's community together. Our family rituals this year have been sweet and grounding amidst all that's felt so hard. So thank you, Jim and Maddie, for being my school of love and for ensuring that I don't take myself too seriously. I often try to cast a vision for the next year. But right now, to look too far out in the future seems naive at best. Some things are the same as they have always been. Ground ourselves in the gospel of Jesus Christ and be responsive to what life brings us, be that in our own lives, in the life of the congregation, or in the life of the nation and the world. This year you have done that in faithful, grounded, and frankly, quite heroic ways. And I have every reason to believe that you will continue to do that in the year to come. We hope and pray that a vaccine will come. But we need to understand that we have a hard winter ahead of us. And that it may well be this time next year before we interact in ways we took for granted before the pandemic. 
we need to understand that we are and will be in transition. And the road out of this pandemic will have its share of challenges. There will be a great deal of sifting and discerning to be done as we emerge from this. We're going to need to ask, what lessons have we learned? How do we carry forward what we've discovered that is good? How do we leave behind those things that weren't serving us well before the pandemic? How do we not rush in to fill generous, gracious space that's been created by this great disruption? How do we not rush to recreate a normal in our society that was filled with injustice? How do we stay focused on how God is calling us forward with the wisdom gained for having walked through this refiner's fire? These are the questions that we'll be wrestling with in the coming year, not to mention bravely confronting whatever life brings us. But through it all, we hold fast to Jesus and we hold fast to one another. And those bonds have never felt stronger. We've been woven into the body of Christ. Dying and rising with him is just what we do. We've done it all year long, and we'll do it in the year to come. In due course, we will find our way to the promised land. But quite honestly, I won't ever regret this wilderness time. Something profound is shifting. Something beautiful is growing. Something powerful is moving. St. Luke's, we will emerge from this wilderness time, this tomb time. And I can't wait to find out what our resurrection life will look like on the other side.